Good evening, my dear viewers. It is I, Dreyhard, and welcome back to Character Conversion. Today, I want to do something special. I have not heard many different character combinations, character designs. I have heard the names of class combinations like the Hexadin or the Warlock Paladin. I have also heard the Dexadin, which is just a Paladin with dexterity usage. I have heard of different ways of combining character traits. One thing I have not seen, though, and one thing that I do not, did not know how to do, was create a cook. What is an adventuring group without a cook? You've got many different cooks different series. You've got Brock from Pokemon, and there are a few others, I just can't remember the names of them. But anyways, a cook. An adventuring party would do very well with a cook character added to the party. But there is no real good way to do a chef. Until I figured something out. I have found the perfect combination of features, classes, and even race to make the perfect chef. And what better chef to recreate in Dungeons and Dragons than the man himself? Gordon Ramsay. So that is what I have set out to do. Create Gordon Ramsay and Dungeons and Dragons. And I think I have the perfect character build. Let us begin. All right, first and foremost, we need to go with race. Of course, uh, right, the stats need to go first. But let's go ahead and go over the stats. We have Strength at 10, Dexterity at 13, Constitution at 11. We're decent at keeping ourselves alive. We are mostly good with speed. We are speedy cooks. Intelligence is going to be a 13, and wisdom is going to be a 14. You know your food, you know the ingredients. This will reflect that. Charisma is going to be a 13. Like your intelligence, you are very good at expressing yourself. Whether that is using intimidation tactics, you are complimenting your fellow chefs, or you're just giving out the good old fashioned insult. All right, now for the race. We are, all, we are, of course, going with human. I want to go with the human variant, though, because we are able to get some good features from it. Our ability score increase is only going to be wisdom and dexterity. The skill we will acquire from the variant human is going to be intimidation. Gordon Ramsay is a very intimidating being. Just being around him causes fear. Now for the feet. 
feature that the human variant allows, we are going to go with the skilled feat. This will give us three different proficiencies to choose from. We are going to do medicine, sleight of hand, and perception. You've got to be very careful when slicing certain ingredients, like for, for example, a puffer fish. Something similar to a puffer fish is going to have that toxic uh, pouch in it. So you need to be careful when cutting into it or else you have contaminated the rest of the food. Perception. You want to be good with perception so you will be able to see that nasty, disgusting food from a mile away. Or you know what a good dish looks like. For languages, we are going with Common, which is the human language in Dungeons and & Dragons, and we are also going with Dwarvish, just to do it. Going on, we have our stat increases, so we'll go ahead and bring Dexterity up to a 14, and Wisdom up to a 15. Now for our background, the only one I could find that would give us what we needed was the Guild Artisan, which, looking at the Guild Artisan in the Player's Handbook, you would think, Gordon Ramsay isn't an artisan, he is the master, he is the Guild Leader. I would agree. Luckily, there is also a variant Guild Artisan, where you are basically the one in charge. Well, more like you're the one who delivers the goods. But we're going with Guild Artisan because it gives us what we need. For our skill proficiencies, we get insight and persuasion. You, again, know your food. You know what is best to go with this food. You know the backstory of the different dishes. Anything that would go with food. Tools. We are using cook's utensils because we are cooks. We are the master chef. We have to know how to use a cook's utensils. Languages, we will just go with Elvish. Just because elves have been known to be gigantic snobs. And what better type of snob than a food snob? And that is Gordon Ramsay. Guild business, of course, is cooks and bakers. And you get the feature of guild membership, which really does not help us in the slightest. Moving on, suggested characteristics. I have found these characteristics listed here that best fit Golden Ramsay practically to a T. And I would suggest playing Gordon Ramsay as Gordon Ramsay. But you do you. You do what you think your chef would do. What their personality traits are. What their ideals are the bonds they have and the flaws they have. You decide what to do. Moving on to class, we're going to start off with Ranger. And I know what you're thinking. Drehan, you donkey! Rangers are the worst class to choose! I say no. Ranger is one of the best classes to use for your chef. How else are you going to find your ingredients? <clears throat> also, Rangers are a party class. You get a good amount of hit die, the hit points. Your armor proficiencies are going to be light armor, medium armor, and shields. Weapons is going to be simple and martial weapons. Your saving throws will be strength and dexterity, and your skills.
skills for this ranger class is going to be animal handling, nature, and survival. You know how to handle your ingredients. And most of those ingredients are going to be from animals. So you need to be able to wrangle up your food. And you also need to know about some of the ingredients. Like say certain fungi. You need to make sure that they're not poisonous. And you need to be able to find those ingredients. Your favorite enemy is going to be beasts. That is all your different animal types. From cows to chickens. That is your favorite enemy. For Natural Explorer, we are going to choose forests as our favorite terrain. Just because most adventures are going to start in a forest. Alright, now for a level up. At level 2, we get our fighting style. We are just going to go ahead and do archery. That will give us an extra bonus to our attack rolls and to our damage rolls for our ranged weaponry. We also get spell casting. The uh, spell save DC and the spell attack modifier are going to be based off of your wisdom modifier. Increase it to another level. We have a level three ranger. And we are going to choose the archetype, Hunter's Long Conclave. With it, we get the Hunter's Prey feature, and for it, we are going to go ahead and choose the Colossus Slayer to help us take down our prey. We also get Primeval Awareness. Moving on to our next level, we have level 4 Ranger. Now, if you do not choose any feats, just go ahead and increase your Dexterity and your Intelligence by 1. But if you do want to choose a feat, go ahead and take the Observant feat. Gordon Ramsay is very observant, and so should your chef. The Observant feature will increase both your Intelligence and Wisdom modifier by 1. You also now have the ability to lip read, which I'm not sure if Gordon Ramsay can do, but with how good his hearing can be, I wouldn't doubt it. Also, you get a plus five to both your perception and your investigation scores. To better see that moldy food in the back of the fridge or that lobster hiding in the muck. One more level up, we are going into level five ranger. This way you get your extra attack. Not much else, but an extra attack is really good. Going on to the next level, level 6, favorite enemy gets a, another enemy added onto its list. We're going to choose monstrosities, because what isn't a little flavor if not with monstro the monstrosities? Some different meats to go into your meals, like displacer beast steaks. Whether 
feet or no feet, your level 8 Ranger now has Lands Stride, making it easier to get through certain areas. But the sharpshooter feet. See, attacking with a long range weapon doesn't improve disadvantage at longer ranges. So if you are on the outside of the bow's range, you still will not get disadvantage. Your ranged weapons also ignore half and three quarters cover, which will be perfect for an archer. Finally, take you can take a minus five penalty to your attack rolls with your ranged weapons to gain an extra 10 to your attack damage, which is beautiful. That will take down your prey for sure. Leveling up, we are going to be adding a new class. We are going to add Bard to our chef. And I can already hear you again. But Drehan, why on earth would you do that? Bards are for singing and songs. Bards aren't for cooking. And once again, I say, aha. For bards are for the arts. And Gordon Ramsay makes food an art form. Since we are multiclassing into bard, we will only get a few proficiencies. We are only going to gain proficiency in performance, and we are going to gain an instrument proficiency. I chose bagpipes because this is Gordon Ramsay. But you do you. <clears throat> For our bard, we'll get a hit die of 1d8, and our hit points will increase by that much as well. We also get spellcasting in charisma. We also get the Bardic Inspiration. Gordon Ramsay inspires. I don't care who you are, unless you're one of those terrible people that he has to berate on his shows. He is inspirational. Leveling up again, we are going to continue with the Bard. We are getting the Jack of All Trades, which will give us half proficiency on anything that we do not have proficiency on. Which is not much. <laughs> Since we have proficiency in almost everything now, we just don't have the proficiencies in some of our dexterity and strength checks. But thanks to Jack of All Trades, we now get half proficiency on those scores. And we also get the Song of Rest. Now, once again, this does not have to be about music. Gordon Ramsay or your chef could, say for example, cook a delicious meal for your party to help get their strength back up especially with the right ingredients. That is your song of rest, or a dish, if you will. Leveling up once more into Bard, we will now get the Bardic College of Lore. We get bonus proficiencies in history, stealth, and deception. Which... Is good. It's not really a Gordon Ramsay thing, but it is still good. Especially with history. You know your food. You also get cutting words. You donkey. <laughs> Insult somebody to give them disadvantage. Now, expertise, that gives you double proficiency on two of your proficiencies. We are going to do perception and sleight of hand. Make it easier 
to cut those ingredients and to see where the poisonous substance is. And for our final level up, we are taking one more level into the Bard, but we are not taking any more feats. So we are just going to go ahead and increase our Charism, Charisma modif Charisma score by 2, giving us a 15. Now to go over the spells that we have acquired. At second level we will have our two Ranger spells, Cure Wounds and Hunter's Mark. At eighth level our Ranger spells increase. We'll have Detect Poison and Disease, Locate Animals and Plants, and we'll also have Spike Growth for a little bit of defense or offense. At ninth level we get our Bard spells, which will be Mage Hand, Vicious Mockery, Bane, Earth Tremor, Healing Word, and Heroism. For Mage Hand, it is to help with your cooking. So you have a pot somewhere on the other side of the room that you need to stir. Use your Mage Hand and start stirring what's in that pot or grab a utensil from another side of the room. That is what your mage hand is going to be for. It is not an attack, so it is perfectly fine. That's 12th level, we get even more spells to go with. Plant Growth and Conjure Volley for the Ranger, and for the Bard, we have Heat Metal, Zone of Truth, Polymorph, and Animate Objects. Again, these are all spells to help with your cooking. Except for Conjure Volley and Polymorph, those are more for offense. For Polymorph, you can turn your foe into that donkey that they are. For Animate Objects, you can bring your utensils to life. Especially if your party members are off on another quest, like investigating something, say you're part of a cooking competition and all the other contestants are being picked off one by one. While they are investigating, you are there still cooking. Zone of Truth, you cannot lie to Gordon Ramsay. Can't even try. Heat Metal, Say you don't have any more room on your stovetop. Heat metal will heat up your pots, pans, whatever you need. That way you can still cook. Now, to go over the equipment we have acquired from these... Uh, this build. Starting equipment, we have leather armor, short swords, and an explorer's pack, as long as our longbow and arrows. From our guild artisan, we have the cook's utensils, letter of introduction from your guild, which, because this is Gordon Ramsay, this is an introduction from, well, you. <laughs> you also have a set of traveler's clothes and a belt pouch with 15 gold pieces. Now, for some recommendations on your equipment, you'll need to find a bunch of different items. I would mainly suggest getting some fine clothes, that way you look presentable to the nobles that you will be visiting. Get a hunting trap to help you trap some of those smaller pests. Some fishing tackle to help you get your fish and stuff. And then get a scholar's pack so you can write down your recipes. Get a set of robes, this will basically be your cooking garments. This is your chef's garments, chef robe. Get yourself a merchant scale so you can measure some of the ingredients, like your spices. And get some soap so you can wash out your dishes. Alright, that is all I have for you. That is our Gordon Ramsay, or our chef in Dungeons and Dragons. I hope that build 
was delicious for you, my viewers. Until next time, this has been Drehan, and I am offline.